Thanksgiving. Welcome to Two Guys and Some Horror. Today's episode, my friend Curtis and I are discussing, discussing, discussioning a classic, a cult hit, uh, one of the best movies ever made, uh, Curtis would probably not say. But, <laughs> Thanks Killing 3, Unofficial, the the official Thanks Killing Two, unofficially calling itself Thanks Killing Three because, uh, the second movie was never made. Uh, uh Curtis. Also, I need to check in with you before I kind of go into the the details of the movie. Okay. Uh, Curtis, how are you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Thanks for uh, thanks for being my uh my ride or die. Forever. I'm doing great. I made you watch this movie. You did. And I don't hate you for and it. And I'm glad you don't hate me yet. I love this film. I thought it was hilarious. I This is exactly what I expected after seeing the first movie. This is the creators getting together and saying, okay, how do we make an even worse movie than the original one? How do we up the camp? How do we up the bullshit? How do we make this slightly offensive slightly slightly offensive i think they do an yeah, amazing they, job they, they did a, they did a good job like keeping it at that level where it's like yeah this is on this is offensive on purpose just to be offensive um and I'm i think a salad. i think they do a really good job of um you know my initial thoughts are that i'm not really a fan of the movie right we've already talked about this i'll just get that out of the way um but I can I can watch this movie and I can see it for what it is. It is a comedy, it's a horror, and they wanted to do some sci-fi. And I think they nailed all three of that. It definitely has its moments where it's really funny. Um, there are moments where it's actually pretty horrific. Uh, it gets it goes back to what I love about Thanks Killing, the first movie, that mm-hmm. I find so funny yet scary at the same time. Um, and then the sci-fi aspects of it are just so ridiculous. It's great. It really is. Uh, from the butthole vortex which we'll get into all of these we'll get into them further but the butthole vortex the uh ovary woman female part mind being lost the puppets that i just can't i think that's what broke it for me actually most of it is i just am not a fan of, of sesame puppets. street and the muppets coming into things killing yeah i just i couldn't do it man well oh man let's talk about uh we're going to talk a little bit more about this stuff. Anyhow, uh-huh. yeah. we'll talk about the uh, the general the general thing about this film. The original film was filmed in about 10 days, and this one was filmed in about 50. Definitely was a lot more effort put into this film. Uh, and when I say effort, I don't mean any of the creativity or amount of work. I mean they actually a little bit more elbow grease, a bit more polish, like here and there. They spent a bit more time to get this film out there. And every everything's a character from, you know from the turkey's random wife and son to just uh this muppet and then the muppet's mind which the muppet's looking for and the mind looks like a vagina uh, <clears throat> they the budget was only $112,000 which for the amount which... of quality like the high quality that you get out of this film and it was done for $112,000 like hats off like I'm going to we got to drop some down the flag but like i gotta say jordan downey did an amazing job with that money amazing job yeah no like you have the grandma puppet or muppet i guess you have the uh the worm you have the the cyborg you have the effects in the film itself 
like if it cost over like if it was if they put a million dollars in this film it wouldn't have surprised me but one hundred twelve thousand dollars like that's that's nothing to really scuff at at all so i, I this was released in the november 13th 2012 uh it's also known as thanks killing sequel uh they will will probably never get another thanks killing movie after this this is probably it i I don't know. I thought it was the first movie is completely different from this one. Well, we'll just say that in terms of like the randomness, if you want like a generic slasher, bad movie, kind of like uh, Jack Frost, that's the first movie. This one completely deviates from that 100%. This is like some 12 year olds fever dream horror movie uh, that gets set in space and the kids I've, I've, I've used this analogy before, but like when a kid picks up his action figures and just kind of clobbers them together and then goes, Oh no! Well, I've gotten a bigger power, and the other guys. Oh, well, I, my power is bigger now, and then the villain just keeps getting—I don't know—more and more ridiculous dicks, ex machinas to kind of save and revive him. It's absolutely insane. If you like movies in the vein of Kung Pao or in the vein of uh, Jack Frost, um, with just completely batshit, terrible, terrible puppeteering absolutely god awful um on purpose uh, a rapping grandma whose raps are ass um Ass-tastic. they've got everything Ass-tastic. they've got everything <laughs> uh what was her boyfriend's name who she liked the slob knob d'angelo or something no d'angelo was last week oh uh, yes yeah, i'm so banging rodney week. now uh man i i have to say like even even though, you know, there was a lot that I wasn't a big fan of right throughout the movie. There's a ton yeah, of yeah. stuff that I found to be really fun. The Star Fox intro was really cool. Uh, a video game homage. Homages. The video game, yeah. There was and there's an actual fight. The 1993 video <laughs> game. <laughs> yes. Segment like a Super Nintendo video game cutscene from like Ninja Gaiden. Yep. We get. You know, you basically get Master Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles throughout the entire film doing a lot of explaining. He does all of your exposition for Thanks Killing 2, which I thought was phenomenal. I thought that was a really good choice. I think they could have done, you know, I, I think they did what they set out to do, I guess. And to pick to pick anything out of this movie and go, that's shit or that's not good is actually blasphemy because it's exactly what they wanted to do. There's no reason to call them out or to say that wasn't very good. That would be like saying that uh, I set out to, I don't know, paint a picture and it looks exactly like what I wanted it to look like. And then people are critiquing my piece of art, right? It's just not worth it. It's so silly to, to bash on something that actually achieved exactly what it wanted to achieve. <laughs> well, the uh, Turkey himself looks great. And then, the very beginning we meet him his wife who's the exact same you know puppet just reused and then we see his son which is uh he's just like a styrofoam ball turkey that looks absolute he is it's ass that's it's terrible he looks fucking so shit and he's like on top of a popsicle stick and they're just around and wiggling and talking like I kind of talk like this the entire film, and it's really obnoxious and annoying. I'll be evil, Dad. So Turkey kills, like, his wife, and then, like, he's, like, disappointed in his son because he's not good at uh, one-liners and being evil. Yeah, he doesn't understand puns. If he can't can't deliver a punny one-liner like like Turkey, that's actually the, the foul-mouthed villain of the film, right? So if you if you haven't figured that out by now, his actual name is Turkey. If you can't deliver a one-liner pun like that, and you're supposed to be Turkey's son, you're probably not going to last long. I mean, this whole... It's Turkey spelled T-U-R-K-I-E, by the mm-hmm. way. Yep. Turkey. If you, uh, if, I don't know, if you can't be a part of this married with children family, you're probably not going to last long. I thought that was yeah. an amazing homage, by the way. That whole intro, the laughing track behind it, it definitely felt like they were shooting a sitcom or trying to shoot a sitcom, and I thought... That was also a lot of fun. It was very funny. I where I lost kind of the lost track of like caring so much about what was going on in the film because it just gets so batshit crazy was right after uh the the title slide montage of burning all the copies of Thanks Killing 2, which I thought was epic. 
that was probably one of the coolest title slides for you know a b style film that i've i've seen in a long time they're just these guys are just laying waste to thanks killing 2 because there's you know plot reasons there are actual plot reasons they do tell us why they're doing it but they just go yeah. so ape shit on burning all the copies it just gets nuts it makes no sense in the context of the film like at all why anything is happening at any point like i'm gonna be honest here like there it, it, there's no there's no way you can make sense out of anything that happens because it's just one thing to a loosely connected plot point that's oh yeah there's this thing and there's no relation like at the very beginning you think turkey's mad that his movie did bad and that's why he's looking for the last copy right and he's trying to find it and just the most random shit happens yeah i mean i i guess to summarize the entire plot point of this film Turkey made Thanks Killing 2 with a secret subliminal message slash virus slash mind controlling whatever to make everyone go nuts and kill each other, right? That's that was what his goal was of Thanks Killing 2 to summarize it. So that's yeah. why that's why these other characters were sent out into space to destroy all copies of Thanks Killing 2 so nothing could ever happen. Um that's the only plot I think that matters in this entire film. You could claim that Yomi is important. I disagree. I think she she is super annoying. And I wait, you didn't like Yomi? No, God, the no. best character in the film. Ah, uh, no, no. Flois is the you best like character in the film. You don't like it when girls talk like this. All right. Why nope. did you like Flois so much? Because I was gonna, I was gonna hit this point later, but let's talk about it now. Why did you like Flois? Because she's a rapping she's grandma. A rapping grandma. It's Danny's. It's or she's Donnie. It's Uncle Donnie. Eric Cartman. She's Uncle, which is even better. I love Eric Cartman. She's Uncle Donnie's. Uh, not Uncle Donnie. She's actually Jefferson's mom, right? Um, yeah. And the so character wise, she's she's Jefferson's mom. And Uncle, uh, whoever, left her home and didn't pay the cable bill. So all she was left with was BET. BET. So she learned that day, God told her, this is even better. This is what makes it even more insane. She's supposed to be a rapper. So she started making mixtapes, yo. And she started selling that shit for a dime on the streets, man. And I don't know. That, like, that's, I don't know. That was it. That's all it took for me. A rapping grandma who, that's all she wants to do. That's her whole goal. And she was told by God to do it. So obviously it's the right choice. It just... sounded very upset when I when I was talking to you and you're like, what the fuck did you make me watch? Yes, because and there's so much yummy. Grandma, hearing you talking about grandma makes me feel better, actually. I don't Remember, I, I, I'm like the positive... All person usually on any movie we watch i can find silver linings in most films that we watch but it's gonna be this one this one was hard this one was hard no it wasn't no it wasn't you're just saying that not enough grandma Uh, not enough grandma not enough grandma so let's let's talk a little bit about uh not not just grandma but let's talk about the goings-ons in this film because i kind of want to hit plot point to plot point real quick and if you want to stop me at any point feel free Okay. Uh, I want to talk about my favorite character, but I'll do that when we get there. Uh, and this movie kind of we we get introdu- introduced to our guest, our protagonist, who is the guy in the uh, the wig, Uncle Donnie. Uncle Donnie and his Pluck Master Three Thousand, which you know, plucks little toy turkeys that Turkey's son really loves. Uh, so Turkey gets mad because his show sucks and his son's a little pussy, so he kills his wife. And lets his son live because, you know, why not? And I was kind of, I was like, he's going to kill his wife and kid? No. Leaves his son alive. Parent of the year. Right? And uh, from there, we get all, we get introduced to all the crazy characters. That Nomi's got to find her mind. Turkey has it, I guess, or something. He says he has it. I don't know. We don't know where her mind went. It just kind of it's kind of gone and then she's looking for it and she just does a bunch of weird things. She meets up with uncle Donnie. They find the original, uh, Turkey. Plucker one. Yeah. 
the pluck master the original pluck master uh -huh. that's my favorite character they turn it on it beat it kills like it technically defeats turkey it's true. and uh i mean does it really though it, it, i mean it like, sends him to the graveyard right i mean he well, dies he, and... he summons skeleton turkeys uh-huh which i thought once again the way that thanksgiving the way thanksgiving works if you don't see turkeys rising from the dead it's not a thanksgiving movie okay it's just not i think in the first one we get something very similar with a weird skeleton turkey that i makes, like his explanation about like how he can't die he's like i'm in the title bitch <laughs> they need me. Everyone else is expendable. Everyone. Uh, they break the fourth wall quite a bit in this film. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of expect it. I thought it was great. I, I loved it. Anyhow, like, uh, the Pluckmaster 3000 is probably my favorite character. The Worm's probably my least favorite. And I'll talk about the Worm. Fucking terrible. The Earthworm the worm... from space? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. And then Muff. Um, Muff's just kind of there. Muff is only reasons. there for one line. One line, dude. The That's Muff the dive, only, yeah. Yes. That is the only reason why Muff's even a character in this movie. Well, Muff, Muff's butt, the butt scene and all that crap. Yeah, the Muff diving. and I don't really... Well, also, Grandma takes over Muff's body. It's just really weird. Mm-hmm. But all like that I could said, have been done in different ways, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. The only reason why Muff was there was purely to get the Muff diving quote, uh, which wasn't even that funny because the damn worm said it. Not, he's been dropping gay innuendos the entire time. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he knows what his character is, and he's fulfilling that role very well. The character you want to die but hasn't died yet, and they won't kill because they know you hate it. <laughs> that's the only reason worm hasn't died. Uh, so Worm, by the way, we'll just talk about it. Like he's he's gay to be gay, and he says like there's an innuendo after an innuendo after an innuendo, and it's like so offensively like stereotypical to the point where it's kind of like oh he's gonna make another another sex joke, he's making another sex joke, and at the very end he he like announces to Nomi he's like Nomi I'm gay, and she's like. <gasps> It's even better though, right? Because the yeah the turkey basically fucks him. Yeah, because he fucked him. He says you're just moon poon. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's like, I had my balls cut off in a fishing trip, and he goes on like this this long explanation about why he has no penis, and, and it's just I'm just like cringing every time the worm speaks. And, and they, I mean, they I just... they built that character for that exact reason. I'm pretty. I mean, I would be shocked there's if there was no, any other reason there's no reason why you're wrong there's no reason <laughs> why you would be wrong there's no reason how you could be wrong you're right it was just so bad and every time he showed up i just wanted to stop turn the movie off ah uh, they 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 did a great job getting what they want wanted to get you it wasn't much it wasn't much broken me good sirs that damn but, worm. Uh, what is his name? Uh, I, the worm's name was it Rhonda? Rhonda, yes. Yeah. Yes, Rhonda the bisexual worm. Rhonda the bisexual worm, uh, who who has one line and it couldn't even it couldn't even nail it. It just couldn't nail it. I I wanted to laugh, but it wasn't delivered. In my opinion, it was not delivered in a in a way to make me laugh. Anyways, let's keep going down the plot line. Done. I don't think they wanted to make you laugh. I think they honestly wanted him to be cringe. You ever been muff diving? Anyhow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the the butt swirling and everything. And then the Pluck Master. The Pluck Master is my favorite character. Uh, the Worm did have one good line, though. The only thing I can't fix is your shitty attitude, Donnie. <laughs> or your piss poor attitude. But... I did like Pluckmaster, the original Pluckmaster. Mm -hmm. he, all he did was just like shit on Donnie the entire time with sass. And when he did it, I enjoyed it. It made me feel a little bit relieved. And he takes over Muff's body, which honestly, good riddance. Muff had no reason to be in the film other than Grandma and everyone taking over his body. 
I love that you liked Pluckmaster when they turned him on, but you hate Rhonda the Worm. And the only reason yeah, why I, I think it's Ronda funny is because they're both voiced by Kevin Stewart. So he he played your there. he played your most hated character and your most loved character. It just that cracks me up. I love it. That's great. I'm not saying he's not talented. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Kevin Stewart. I'm just talking about the characters. He portrayed a really a character that you absolutely hated, but he could also portray ah. a character that you absolutely loved. It's amazing. That's versatility at its finest right there. And well, there's also Meow Meow. Meow Meow was pretty... That whole skit. I don't know, man. I'm not touching that. I'm not... I don't I'm... know. There, there are a lot of little mini cartoons here, and it's like, uh-huh. some string cheese. Like, Made made with chemicals because fuck you and made from I the lab. Know. Fuck you. I mean, at least that one I actually laughed at. The Meowmere stuff, like I just I was not a fan of that whole skit. Just not a big fan of it. I I really think they they're like let's put in some shitty animation <laughs> just to have some shitty animation. In well, it probably terrible... saved them, you know, on the budget. They probably just hired a flash animator. Yeah, just had him do it. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, we could talk a little bit about that too, but I thought this did a great job. Mr. Jordan Downey uh, was Turkey, Yomi, Wise Turkey, and Muff's voice. Uh, mm-hmm. I, Muff just kind of grunts and, and groans the entire time. But yeah. Yeah. Christina so Blevins. Turkey's our killer, but, always has been, voiced by the same guy, the creator. Yomi is the new kind of heroine of this film and um you know mixed opinions on her from our from our hosts uh Wise Turkey though uh is who I I called Master Splinter it's basically the oldest turkey yeah. alive and remembers you know the historical reasons why uh turkey went on started going on a killing spree basically and and how the native americans put a curse on him and all that fun stuff from the first film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's thanks killing is definitely worth it around the holiday for me. I think it's perfect muff. Like you said before, not, not a, not even really there. Non-existent pretty much. I, I think this movie is a movie you should watch with friends at a party. I think this is one of those movies you just put on in the background and people will kind of just turn around and watch it and be like, what the fuck is happening? And be absolutely confused, but some people will be able to to enjoy it and laugh. Yeah, I could um, say you could even make this into like a you know a watch party a for the night. well the first and the you could do both right you could do it on yeah. if you're having a friends giving and your friends are foul mouthed and like uh, silly humor like say they like Rick and Morty I think this would be right up the alley. I agree with you. Yeah. Still bum we never get our lost copy of Thanks Killing Two. Uh, I feel like that movie would have been uh, phenomenal, you know. In you space, no one, no one can hear space. you. Based. <laughs> he was in that giant turkey baster at the the very beginning. We didn't even quote his best line: "Nice tits, bitch." In space. And that outfit that that uh, the ladies, the naked astronaut Wanda Lust. Uh, it's just her tits. It's yeah, the suit. So the suit is a regular space suit, but literally two visual holes are cut out right at her tits um nice tits bitch nice tits in bitch space. in spurs that's that's the line folks that's it nothing more to it and that's i mean that was the start of thanks killing two that we'll never get to see it could have it could have even gotten better we'll never know we could have had the pizza you know that talking pie or whatever that we never see again pilot <laughs> pilot yeah <laughs> Pilot. The name is just so silly because it's an actual pie, but it's supposed to be the pilot, huh? Star Fox. That's the Star Fox reference as well. Is when he's talking to Pilot. Oh man. yeah. So uh, where did we leave off? Girl. Where did we leave off on the plot? We were. I mean, there's not really a plot to discuss aside from they they. She goes to the house for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Where she meets all the characters. Everybody's introduced to one another. Turkey shows up. Turkey kills one of the characters. Nobody else dies who's one in the main party, uh, except for Nomi gets sucked into the vortex. Turkey gets murdered by his son, who turns good, who 
like his spirit possesses the movie the box of the movie and the child is now the box art yes that i thought was actually yeah. kind of interesting um so the son basically embodies thanks killing two and now turkey is after getting thanksgiving two back because he's going to use it to take over the world and cause mass anarchy but that, that means still by making it's, everyone watch it. Yeah, it's it's just really hard to kind of tie it all together and really make sense of it all. It is absolute it is it is absolute anarchy throughout most of the the second especially second half uh of yeah, this yeah. film. Um you know when they go down into Turkey Hell or wherever that was supposed to be mm-hmm. when uh Ronda the Worm and Yomi disguise themselves as turkeys mm-hmm. and are kind of going through the the dungeon, the Turkey Dungeon of Hell or whatever it is. I thought that was, you know, funny. I, I felt like that was the only time I really didn't mind Yomi. Um, I thought she was actually quite funny and clever with the with the worm. But, you know, the constant wisecracking, the rats playing butt cheese was freaking... That had me laughing really hard. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just more into childish humor. Or maybe just some parts of this movie didn't really hit with me. And others did. Um, but the more you watch it, the more I think you can find that is charming and funny in it. And like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, Jordan, Jordan did what Jordan wanted to do. And I don't know. I feel like uh, him, his brother and their friend, Kevin did a great job. I mean, they had a lot of fun with it, so can't really argue with them about it to each their own. I liked it. I gave this movie a Clark thumbs up. I also looks like the early worm just got the bird. <laughs> when uh, Rhonda and Muff show up at the party to save them. And everybody beats the crap out of the turkey. The turkey comes back, beats the crap out of everyone. They go to turkey hell, like you said. And the skeleton turkeys get beaten up by everyone. Turkey just loses. I kind of want to see more of turkey just owning everyone. I kind of want more of that. Yeah, that'd be more like the first movie, in my opinion, because that's what we get a ton of is is uh, Turkey just destroying <laughs> most of the, the cast in that film. Yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, it's a true, it's a true, it follows more of a true pattern for a slasher. You still get your famous lines though, "Nice tits, bitch," um, but it's not in space, so you know it's it's only half as good. I warned you, mother. No, no technology at the dinner table, table, or you get the long pike. Long pike? You mean that fucking butter knife taped to the end of a broomstick? Oh, Jefferson. Get all flawless. We should probably oh, talk. Jefferson. We should probably talk about Jefferson yes. a little bit. Jefferson dies as soon as Turkey shows up. Yeah, but he does but it then... in, in such a weird way because it's kind of like he's in a dream state, thinking he's getting his new long pike, right? And I thought that was really clever. Because you know something bad's happening. Because he's like in this weird mental state where everything's perfect and it's like heaven. You know, heaven's all around him. He's getting his new long pike. And then it cuts back afterwards and he's just in pieces on the ground. And and the turkey just had, you know, chopped him up. Oh, it's hilarious. Well, he got his long pike. He's in heaven. Grandma dies. And then she's like, come to heaven, Grandma. There's uh there's cards up here. You can slob D'Angelo's knob here. Uh yeah. Uh, anyhow. He does that like twice. And the third time when uh Nomi dies and he's like, Oh <sighs> Hey Nomi. Oh, you wanna come to heaven? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nomi, you know, I, Yomi gets, that's basically how I, how I feel about Yomi. So, I mean, I can't really argue. It's still probably one of the better deliveries in the movie. Cause he's all like <laughs> calm and solemn. And he's like, Oh, you want to come to heaven too? Now fuck you. <laughs> You're staying no heaven for you. Um, Dude, I loved it. I love how she just fucks with them. The whole idea of the Thanksgiving land, you know, a whole theme park built around Thanksgiving was 
was interesting and, and a good plot point because that's what Jefferson's whole role is. He's the security guard. He's basically the, the CIA, the MI6, the FBI, the police department, the fire department, the paramedics, all wrapped into one. That's Jefferson's job. That thing he's the head of away. security. Head of, of security. And now he's head of security in heaven. Not letting Yomi in. I mean, he was onto her from the first moment she stepped into that into that apartment. All right, I don't have much else to talk about this movie, so I think I think we can move on to. We'll do a quick segue into uh, good film, but we liked it. Uh, watch it again sometime. Moving on, we're going to talk about what's going on in our lives. And yes. Curtis, today I think we're going to have to start with you because my friend. That is how we do it. Yes. So uh, this week, I got a puppy. I brought home a dog uh, for my for my familia. Uh, she is a Just chocolate. A she is a. She's not in here right now. She left me. She didn't like the movie either. Um, she's a chocolate lab mixed with Newfoundland, and uh, she's about seven months old. Uh, oh. She's a cutie. She's a dark chocolate. Um, we love her so far. You know, two days in. We met her on Sunday. Drove I drove to get her on Monday. Uh so today's kind of her second day at home. She's just learning how how we live and how she's can she can fit right into that. But uh nothing else really interesting for me. Work's been pretty heavy and slamming me, so um you know, between watching the movies for the show and stuff like that. Obviously, man behind the curtain, we're filming this way, 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 way time wise different than when this will come out, but all of it still applies. What have you been up yeah. to, pal? Well, today is actually election day. Uh, man behind the curtain room is gonna I'm just gonna reveal that to you the day we're recording. And uh, I know we we have all that stuff. So right now, if if you're listening to this in the future and none of the stuff people are afraid of happened, that's great because I hope they don't. Because uh, you got like all the people who are like really scared that you know we might be Armageddon, like the doomsday kind of speaking, which which you know it might be. But I, my hope is that when you're listening to this, we can all just kind of look back and laugh and go, <laughs> it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, you know? Democracy and, played uh, out and uh, everything went okay. That's what I everyone's, hope. Everyone's happy. We're all here still. You're listening to this amazing podcast. Uh, we're here together, folks. We're on the same team. We're all friends. Uh, but yeah, same thing on my end with work kind of, being a little crazy, just been super busy with everything, and uh, I am actually going to give up video games for the entire month of December. I was originally going to be November. It was start well no, October and then November. Now December, uh, I'm taking. So I think I told told you guys this already, but I am doing EMT training uh, in the following month. So uh, that'll be fun. That is me. In a Sweet. nutshell, Curtis. Sweet. So just do a quick plug here and we can zibbity zoop zoop doop. Uh kind of talk about our podcast here, Two Guys and Some Horror. We are on YouTube. So check us out there. And that is just two guys and some horror. Feel free to ring that bell, subscribe to us. We'd love to have you around. Uh also check us out on social media, which is the number two guys horror pod. That is two guys horror pod. <laughs> both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we post daily on Twitter, lots of view parties, everything. Curtis does a lot of cool uh, uh, surveys on Mondays, right? Yep. And then uh, Instagram, we, we'll new, usually have like announcements whenever we do live streams, just like we did for Halloween. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to reach out to us, have any movie suggestions, anything you want us to watch, feel free to leave us a tweet or comment on Insta or send us an email at the full word spelled out to T W O two guys and some horror at gmail.com. And uh, with that being said, I, I got nothing else, man. How about you, Curtis? Nada. We love right. you. We appreciate we you. Do. Make good choices. Don't do too many drugs. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
All right, so everything's live. Let's get some voice checks going. One, two, one, two, test, test, test. <coughs> test, test, test. Is that loud? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. Can you try again? Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Bon appetit. Perfecto. Bon appetit. This is better coming out than it did going in. You know what I say? Hey. <laughs> <laughs>